Father God, we just thank you again for this wonderful and beautiful Sabbath. We thank you, O oh gracious God, that we have this opportunity to come to you because we know, O oh gracious God, the way things are going with this pandemic that there are so many, O oh God, that's missing the service of the Lord. And we pray, O oh gracious God, that somehow, some way, that they will be able, O oh God, to learn and to be able to keep their heart and mind stayed on you. And gracious God, we ask that as we look at the way things are going, help us to hold on to our faith and to know, O oh gracious God, that you will deliver the saints of the living God. And so, pray, Father, we pray that as we study, we ask that your spirit will teach us and move with us. And even as we come to the feast days in this year, oh God, especially pay, help us to pay attention to each feast day so that we can call on you, that we will be able Oh, gracious God, to see exactly what you're saying, that we will follow you. And when even the day of, of Shavuot come, that we will realize about your spirit. And when we get to Yom Kippur, help us to be able, oh, gracious God, to repent, all of us, year by year by year, O oh, gracious God, that we will be able, O oh God, to stay in your spirit. Now, we pray this in the precious name of Yeshua. If you all agree, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. As we uh, look at verse uh, 13 of Acts chapter 2, uh, and we want to be able to um, continue with this because the Spirit of God means a lot in our lives to help lead us and guide us each day. And folks, I tell you, it's very important that we do that because we have such a conflict in our lives today and uh, <clears throat> people are going one way and going another way. And so when people have to make a decision, especially without being in God, we begin to have more and more conflicts. And so people are beginning to have more and more Lashon Hara. Come on, y'all see that? More and more Lashon Hara. So, and uh, if you really think about it, it goes into Lashon Hara, Motsi Shamra, and Ra Chilis, and all of these different Hebraic terms uh, that we brought to this city uh, years ago. <clears throat> we know that people are just talking and talking and saying things, saying things, and they're especially talking about the difference in the presidents now. And they even get so they talk to, about their neighbors. They talk about all kinds of things. And God is letting us know that whether you are right or wrong, God is going to still hold you accountable for talking something you're not supposed to be talking about. Amen. Come on. Amen, preacher. Amen. Amen. See, that's what it's all about. And a lot of people don't understand that. And I don't want to be around them because of the fact that they'll talk about anybody. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and uh, they don't care what they say. And any time you do that, you are in uh, God's focus is on you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Oh, so uh, we're just so thankful, so thankful to be able to get into this portion of scripture. So we're going to uh, read uh, 2.13 of Acts, Acts 2.13. 
And it says right here, it says, others mocking, saying, these men are full of new wine. Now, isn't it amazing that wine was the only thing that they could really look at the way the people was acting? Come on now. <laughs> they related to wine. Why is that? Wine has something in it that can actually cause you to act. Uh huh. Yeah, we're all right. <laughs> you should make them happy. <laughs> and that might be so. But then sometimes it goes from happiness to being, uh, yeah, out of order. Yeah. And uh, what has happened to a lot of people, they've gotten out of order. Now, probably a lot of people don't want to hear that. But we have to understand that when you do things or you are raised in a family where people are always talking and talking about the neighbors and talking about things like that, uh, this is that kind of thing. Now, we're talking about saints right now. I, I'm going to say that again. I said we're talking about saints. And sometimes saints, and I, I'm glad you all agree with me right here, uh, because sometimes saints will talk about each other, not meaning to hurt anybody, but they are just talking and talking and talking. And that's the reason why years ago God gave me the terminology of Lashon Hara. And what is Lashon? It's your tongue. And a lot of us, when we get before God, we're going to have to answer for what we have said with our tongue. Because I tell you something, folks. We got to realize that God don't take it lightly when you are running down one another and don't know really anything. Come on now. Uh, this, is, this is something that we really need to be careful about. And this is another thing about the presidency. Watch out what you say about them. Amen? Whether they are right or whether they are wrong, keep your mouth off of them. Let God handle it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bless you, sis. Amen. And so we are just so uh, happy today that a lot of us have begun to see this thing and we don't talk as much as we used to. Come on now, because we realize we're going to have to answer for every word. Every word I say out of my mouth, it's, it's weighed in the balance. It's recorded. God doesn't lose one word. And, and, and he knows what I mean even if I grunt. Come on, somebody. Yeah, he, he want to know why did you, he know why you said it. Come on now. And we are going to be judged according to that. A lot of us think we're getting away. But you know, no, no. He don't miss a beat. He never sleep, nor slumber. Isn't that what the scripture says? Amen. I'm glad I got some, some ministers in here because, that handle the word because this is very, very important. You can attest to that. I mean, there's no, no uh, if and ands or buts about it. We've got to learn how to respect one another. Uh, and, and so this is something that is so key. Uh, would you, would you uh, give me, uh, well, okay, start on 13, and then we, we will uh, go down uh, a little further, even if we have 
touch some of that, okay? We will uh, look at that a little more. Please. Others apparently did not understand any of the languages. Yeah. And because they could not understand the meaning, they jumped to the conclusion that it had no meaning. Yeah. Therefore, they proceeded to mock, saying the people were full of new wine. Yeah. Sweet wine. Aha. Uh -huh. New wine here is the Greek glucose, from which we get the word glucose. Yeah, glucose. Yeah. A name for grape sugar. Yeah. It is not the ordinary word for new wine and probably represents an intoxicating wine made from a very sweet grape, which would have a higher alcoholic content. Yes, now let's, let's, let's look at that because, you know, um, I, I can't even remember using the word glucose uh, uh, just in civilian life, but when I was working for a pharmaceutical firm, I remember glucose because we used to use the terminology in chemistry and, and stuff like that. So we, we got to understand that uh, in every job, there's a different terminology. Come on, am I right? Come on now. And, and if you learn it well, then you be able to handle yourself better. Amen? All right. Uh, so, so this is the kind of thing <clears throat> that we need to learn in the church. God have a lingo. <laughs> He's given us his word. And any time you step outside of that, you're in trouble with God. That God wants us to treat each other with respect. Come on now. And when you step outside of that, you are in trouble with God. I don't care who you've been conversing with or about. Come on now. And this is, <clears throat> this is very, very important. We're not going to get away with anything, folks. So we might as well come clean. A lot of people just enjoy confusion. But I'm going to tell you right now, they're going to be sadly, uh, they're going to be in a sad place a little later on. Did you hear what I say? Yeah, they, <laughs> all right now. This, this thing is, 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 is more involved than what we think it is and God don't waste time trying to teach you something uh, unless he mean for you to obey it so he taught us that and we this is the reason why we do feast days every year we have a time of, of rejoicing we have a time of praying we have a time of all of these things in fact, this church and about 12 other churches each year have been praying for this city. Now, just to think about it. Now, uh, well, it's been almost 20, this year make the 21st year that we've been praying. And according to statistics, I haven't been keeping up with it. But somebody told me it's not that many people in Petersburg that have received anything about this uh, pandemic. But why do you think that is? Huh? They didn't have a vaccine. So why do you think it is? It is because all these churches have been praying for 21 years. <clears throat> it makes a difference, folks. Every family that continues to pray, that's protection. Come on now. If you just run in your mouth and you're not praying, you're in trouble. And you're going to stay sick. Isn't that something? People will stay sick. And you wonder what's wrong? Check your Lashon. Come on, somebody. And, and, and some of us think we're getting away, but we're not getting away. Amen? 
Praise God. Would you take us a little further, please? It would be sometime before the grape harvest began in August, and real new wine or grape juice uh -huh. would again be available. Uh -huh. Some drinkers do become noisy, <clears throat> and this may be what uh -huh. the mockers were thinking of. Yeah, mockers, mockers. You notice what it said? Mockers. We got markers everywhere. Mockers, talkers making fun of other people, trying to find something to talk about. If you were raised like that, you in trouble. That's the reason why people stay sick. It's your mouth that's making you sick. Come on, somebody. As long as you know how to treat people, the better off you'll be. Didn't he want us to be kind one to another? Didn't, don't, didn't he, what, he said, love one another as he has loved us. Come on, somebody. He give us instruction. <clears throat> and because we won't do it, God has got to deal with you. He got to be true to himself. Amen? And this is very, very important. Amen. So, let us go a little further, please. But one must not suppose there was any sign of kind of frenzy that marked heathen drunken debauchery. Uh-huh. The chief <clears throat> emotion of the 120 was still joy. All right. Now, here these people are enjoying the Lord God. But those who wasn't tuned to what was going on in the spirit start mocking. Isn't that something? I said those who were not in the what? And not in the spirit, they began to mock others who were in the spirit. Does that tell us anything today? I'm so glad all of this is right in the scriptures. Absolutely, they have to be in the flesh because if you are in the spirit, you wouldn't say the things that you're saying. Yes, you'll be very careful as to what you're saying. All right, let's go a little further, please. They had been thanking and praising God in their own languages. Uh -huh. Luke 24, 53. Uh -huh. And now the Holy Spirit had given them new languages to praise God. Y yes. Their uh -huh. hearts were still going out to God in praise, yeah. even though they did not understand what they were saying. Yes. Here's God trying to give humanity something that's going to help them to help save the other part of humanity that his word and his spirit can move throughout the earth. So God is giving the helper, the paraclete, come on, to help the saints, to be able to get people saved, delivered, and set free. And they begin to mark, talking about new wine. See, they always bring things back from the spirit back to humanity. And God is trying to get humanity to move more into the spirit. So anytime you see things like that happening, you will know exactly where that person is. Anytime all they talk is humanity. That's not all God wants to use us the way he wants to use us. God wants to use you in the spirit, and he certainly is not going to tell you to mock other people. But that's what they were doing right there in the scriptures. On a holy day that the power of God came out of heaven down on the earth, 
to be able to help them to evangelize. Come on now, somebody. Can you see it? But yet, at the same time, we are so strong in our mind and humanity until we begin to mock others who's walking in the spirit. Now, what a shame. You can tell where people are, just listen to what they say. Come on now. It, it's a terrible shame. And now how can you call yourself a believer walking around disobeying God and running everybody down? How can you do it? Lord have mercy. I mean, I could stay right here all day and preach on that. That Lashon Ra is terrible. But many of us are going to lose our soul because of Lashon right here. And what did James says? This boy right here is hard to tame, right? Can't you see the reason why God wants to give us something to control this? Well, listen, it says so in the scripture. And so we, we need to understand that and then follow what the Spirit of God give us to say out of our mouths. Amen? Praise God. This I don't know whether you all realize it or not, but this is good stuff. Amen? All right. Uh, so we need to praise God with this. We need to be praying with, with our tongue. We need to be making friends with other people to bring them into the kingdom. We need to do all these kind of things. And... <clears throat> Some people are not paying that any attention. You want to use your tongue the way you want to use it? For God's sake, go out in the woods somewhere. Get away from around people. Because now you're putting poison in somebody else's ear. And you can cause them to lose their soul if they are not up on the word. You know what I'm saying? And so this is, this is a thing that I'm glad, this is just in the lesson. This is not anything I'm trying to say. It's right, well, you, you've got a Bible, read it. It's right there in the lesson. We just happen to be going through the uh, a book of Acts, amen? And so this is, this is very important. Uh, would you give me the next Verse, please, uh, 214, and then we'll uh, uh, see what else is being said here. All right? 214, amen. And it says, but Peter standing up. I, I like that, amen. The Spirit of God must have been, been on him, amen. Uh, uh, staying up with the eleven. It says, lift up his voice and said unto them, he says, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. It says, be uh, this known unto you and hearken unto my word, my words. Listen, he's trying to give them some in what? instructions, insight as to what's going on because he now felt the Spirit of God saying, Peter, you need to say something. <laughs> Come on now, somebody. He didn't just say something because he thought it was a good idea. He said something because he got a nudge from God. 
And so when he got that nudge, he stood up. So he must have been sitting down. Come on. He stood up and then he began to let them know what God was saying to him so they could get this thing straight and understand that this is a God thing so don't turn it into some humanity earthly thing that you want to play with and make fun of other godly people. Come on somebody. Folks, this, this kind of thing is very, very important. And I'm going to tell you, and I can talk about myself if I want to. Amen, right here. Anybody remember those small storefront churches? We used to call them uh, uh, holiness churches. They weren't big like all of you because it was only a small group of people who would families get together and they would get in there and beat drums and they would uh, uh, call on God and praise and worship God, and you could hear it a half a block away. Anybody remember that? But those people were serious about God, and those were the kind of people speaking in tongues. Everybody wasn't speaking in tongues. And this was before Pentecost got strong, uh, uh, the Pentecostal movement, long before that. Come on now. And so they used to dress like black and white. Come on now. And they used to dress, I mean, long dresses. And the men, they were uh, dressing, you know, with black on. And so they, they uh, dressed a certain way. They wanted to... The, the, the neighbors to know that they were different. Come on now. I wonder why believers don't want to be different today. They want to be like the world. Yeah, yeah assimilation, yeah, that's key for you. And exactly what you've been saying, yes. But what God wants us to do is be light and salt, be different. He wants us different. It's a shame before the true and the living God that God has brought us this far. Other churches have come out of this church. Come on now. And they are doing well, and we are being what? Almost stomached because of the fact that we are going to have to pay more attention to what the Spirit is saying rather than each other. Oh, somebody. When we start listening, I, I'm so glad that all of this is right here in the scriptures. And if it ain't there, it's in the commentary that's explaining it. We are going to have to pay more attention and give each other more respect. Come on, somebody. And I, I'll tell you, all of this is of God. If it wasn't so, I wouldn't say it. All right? Uh, and, and, and pretty soon, folks, we are, going to, uh, <clears throat> we are going to make sure that we have plenty of time, like we used to when we were very small, you know, a small congregation. If, if, if it took time to pray, uh, we, we could pray all day if necessary. And in fact, when we were really small, we would pray all day and all night. Come on, somebody. And God raised us up and brought us up out of that. Come on now. See, churches today don't do that. At a certain time of day, you lock that church. You go home. Come on now. And so we are going to have to get to a place where the house of God be the leader in the neighborhood. <clears throat> Come on. 
If the church would stand up and take its rightful place today, a lot of stuff that's going on would cease. Come on, somebody. But we so busy following after somebody else's lead until we can't take the lead. We waiting to see what the news gonna say. We waiting to see what somebody else gonna say. We are not even paying attention to what thus saith the Lord. We ought to be leaders. Amen. Would you give us some more on that, please? The commentary, please. Yeah, go to um, go to fourteen because uh, and, and just give me. Uh, few lines of 14 right there in the front where it talks about Peter. Yeah. When Peter and the 11 other apostles, including Matthias, Matthias, Matthias yeah, stood. stood, the whole crowd <coughs> gave their attention to Peter. Yeah. The 120 probably stopped speaking in other tongues. All right. Still anointed by the Spirit, he yeah. raised his voice and yeah. proceeded to utter forth a pet Well, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> the uh, Greek word, okay. Yeah. Or speak out of them. Yeah. The word used for this speaking is from the same verb used in the utterance in tongues. Yeah. In, ver in chapter 2, verse 4. Two, 2, verse 4. All right. So that's where things really began to uh, manifest, okay? So, <clears throat> folks, we got to realize that if we are children of God, we come in here <clears throat> and the music is playing. Thank you, sir, brother. The music is playing. And we began to feel the presence of God. When you feel the presence of God, it ain't time to quit. You feel the presence of God because God probably wants to, you to continue so that he can speak. Come on now. And so once you begin to continue to do that, and more and more you feel a little better until after a while you, you, you want to speak because God is saying something. Yes, but you don't have a mic. All right. Oh, yes, yes. And he tells you all of that in, in the book of Corinthians. He lets you know. Uh, so even if you did it in the spirit, he'd give you the understanding. He was speaking or singing or whatever. He, he'll give you the interpretation. And a lot of those messages we miss because of the fact we don't follow the scriptures anymore like we used to. Yes. And so, so this is a very good key, folks. So when God is leading your service, how can you go wrong? See, I'm not talking about your bulletin. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing about that? You got it all written out exactly how you're going to do it. Now, if it's written out and you give God space between, it, that, that, that's a different thing. But when we just go by the book, Come on now, that we have set in order. That might not be God's order. Yeah. And so the house of the Lord ought to always, before we make any decision, is to hear what God has to say, even if it take another day. Come on. For it, why do you think I got all the uh, notebooks and pencils? And I made sure it had a rubber on it in case if you write something down and make a mistake, you can rub it out and get it right. Come on, y'all remember the notebooks and the pencils? And the young and the old, 
Anybody who wanted it, I gave it to them. Because it's very important that we hear God speak to us and give us leading and guidance. The church is not worried about that today. That's the reason why we're missing so much. Because we are not trying to hear from heaven. We're trying to do what we uh, think is right according to our own mind. Again? Yes, but, but we got to come back. We got to come back to him. <clears throat> and this is the reason why the feast days is so important. You got to take time out from the community and come and say, God, what is it? Come on now. <clears throat> We got we to gotta do that. And so the more we lessen the Sabbath and the more, because feast days are also a Sabbath. Yes. Right. Come on now. Yes. So if we, if we cut the, all the Sabbaths out, when God going to speak to us? Or speak to the community? And just to think, your young children, before they grow up to be men and women and get married, if they get used to following God, they would never make a mistake buying anything in their life. Because all they got to do is say, Lord, what you say? Should I get this or that? And many of us won't, won't buy a lemon. Y'all know what a lemon is. Amen. You wouldn't, you wouldn't just purchase a lemon and then have to buy it all over again. Come on now. It's because you're talking to who? Somebody who knows exactly what's, whatever you want to buy, whether it's good or bad, and how long it will last. So, the power of God, the spirit of God, the very thing we've been talking about and trying to keep away from us because we sound unintelligible is the very thing that's helping us to get through life without problems. Come on, can y'all see it? My God, we got to pay more attention to that. I wish we wouldn't let our mind overrule the spirit of God because we don't have it. We don't truly have it until he speaks. Amen? Praise God. Okay. Uh, would you take us a little further, please? It suggests that Peter spoke in his own language, mm. Aramaic, yeah. as the spirit gave <clears throat> utterance. In other words, what follows is not a sermon in the ordinary sense of the word. Uh -huh. Certainly, Peter did not sit down mm -hmm. and figure. figure out three points. All right. No, he didn't, he didn't have time to write a sermon because when you go to seminaries, when you go to school, you learn how to write a three-point sermon. Well, during the day of Pentecost, Peter just stood up because God wanted to speak through him. He didn't have time to say, well, I got to write a sermon before I speak. Come on, somebody. He spoke according to the way God gave it to him. And he said exactly what he was supposed to say to get the church in line with heaven. See, this is, this is what's important. We got too much of human minds into the ministry today until God doesn't even get a chance to speak. And then we wonder what's wrong with us. It's because we've already talked it over as what we're going to do. Now, what is God going to do? God said, well, all right, if that's the way you want it, 
th there you have it. But when you get time for me, I, I t I'll tell you what to do. Come on, folks. We need this in our home, not just in the church. My God. But many of us are what? We're hustling and bustling to keep our schedules, right? And so we don't have time to be able to listen to God. And you, you talk to people about being quiet before God so God can speak today, and it's almost like you're talking to a dummy. Amen. Isn't that right, bro? That's it. It's a shame. But we are say we are children of God. If you take your orders from God, when, when you were in service, you took your orders from somebody. Suppose you say, now I ain't going to listen to you no more. Yeah, court martial, right. You can't do that. Can you imagine all these churches would be court, court martial? You know, if God would, would operate like that. See, because we don't give God any time. And God takes time because he's got something important to say. Not we running our mouth. Amen? That's not good all the time. And so this is, this is a very key that we need to get a hold of. Uh, <clears throat> Would you give us 14? Well, let's see. Yeah, well, we got 14. Uh, well, let me say this. It says, um, it says, ye men of Judea and all ye uh, that dwell in Jerusalem. And was that the place where he put his name? He put his name where, right there in Jerusalem. Amen. It says, <clears throat> Be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. You know what I'm saying? Hearken unto my words, not your words. Not what we've gotten together and talked about what we're going to do, or how we're going to do it. No. Consult the Lord. Pray over it. Don't be making no quick decisions as to what you feel. Get the mind of God in this situation. And God can tell you everything that needs to be done because when God is in a message you preach or teach, he can reach everybody in the place who really want it. Y'all didn't hear that. This is the reason why the lady had, uh, had uh, she hadn't even talked to the preacher. But the lady thought that the preacher had been talking to her friends who she had been talking to. And so she had that great big pocketbook. So when the preacher started preaching and sound like he was hitting on some things that she had been talking to her friend about. So she just got up and fixed her clothes really nice and took that big pocketbook and went up to the pulpit and slapped the preacher with that pocketbook. Why are you talking about me? Come on, somebody. Listen, the preacher didn't know nothing about that conversation. But can't you see what happens? This is the, so a lot of us sat in the seat and said, well, what does he know about that? Or what does that lady know about prophesying like she's prophesying? How do they know anything about me? By this, God knows what? Everything. 
God knows everything. Yes, and he can let us understand some things. He knows exactly where we are, and we can't get away with any kind of thing we want to do and say. Come on now. So we might as well let God deal with us. Amen? Even before we minister. Amen? Yes. By the Spirit, because um, it has to be God's Spirit, because there's another Spirit that speaks. Oh, yeah. But that Spirit, that other Spirit that speaks, speaks about your past. Yeah. So we have to be careful when we listen to words that come out from yeah. so-called prophets, that it has to align with the Scripture. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, <clears throat> so, folks, listen, we have got to really get back to how we were when we were having a lot of problems and didn't know how we was going to make it. We had to pray. Amen. Well, thank you for an amen. I said you had to pray. You, did, you, you couldn't turn to nobody else. You had to turn to God. That's how we, why we are here today. So this is, a, this is a, a, a real key to where we're supposed to be. Let him lead. Amen? All right. This is, this is just so. In fact, uh, now I'm not asking anybody to get this book, but I'm just saying if you, if you have any free time to just check it out, it's talking about redeeming the time. Doing what? Redeeming the time. And this is very, very important that we learn how to redeem the time and to know that God made time, but God is not subject to time. Come on, somebody. Amen. In fact, some of us might need this right now while all this stuff is going on. Amen? So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good key that we begin to <clears throat> realize that God is into our lives much more than we think he is. And just because you don't talk to him, he's watching you. Come on, somebody. Oh, never leave you, nor, you got it. Never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Once you become his, that's it. Amen. Praise God. All right. So, uh, let us, okay, we got a few more minutes. Let's see. Um, and 14. Uh -huh. Still have some. Things. All right, well, take it on down, please. It seems likely this was a spontaneous manifestation of the gift of prophecy. Uh-huh. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10 mm -hmm. and 14, verse 3. Mm -hmm. Peter's address was directed to the Jewish men and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Uh-huh. This was a polite way to begin and followed their custom. But yes. it does not rule out the woman. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, re really, well, we got a lot we could say about that. But, you know, uh, if God is leading, everybody's going to be in sync if God is leading. I mean, and people are, are gathering and, and, and begin to understand that we are there to get a voice from God, a word from God. We are not there to get each other's word. See, our problem is people have gotten so uh, beside themselves now till everybody think they got the idea or they got the way. But I heard the Bible says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, so instead of following him, we've been following everybody else. 
And that's the reason why we're having so many what? Problems. And sometimes, folks, it's best that we don't say anything when we don't know what to say. Y'all hear that? Because it's a sin and a shame to lead, you call your friend, in a direction which God don't want them to go. Because we can't see everything. We don't know everything. But God can. He's omniscient. I mean, God knows <laughs> the whole time cycle. Yes. And he can put, uh, he can redeem the time. He can put things in time that need to be there. Amen. And you know, it does it weekly when we do the Torah portion. It goes back into time. It's not going to be exactly at that time, but it's going to enter into that same time. Yes. So when we study the parashat of today, we can see that. Amen. And, and, and I'm glad about that. Uh, listen, and, and I'll say this while, while I uh, have a few more, uh, one or two more minutes. We have to realize that if things have not been right in your childhood, y'all, did y'all hear what I say? And you remember your childhood that things wasn't right and you want to go to God about it to fix it, all God got to do is go back to that time and fix things in your life that you'll never have to worry about it again. I'm talking God now. I'm not talking about the human mind. The human mind can't do it. But I'm telling you what, if there's something in your life that you made a mistake and it come back to you and that mind say, hey, you, you need to do something about that. You need to fix that. Go to God and say, God, redeem the time for me. Have mercy. Come on, somebody. Say what? Have mercy. mercy, Lord. During that time, Lord, you remember it. It wasn't right. I was a child when that happened. But Lord, I took a part with that. Would you forgive my family? Forgive my bloodline. Anybody hear what I'm talking about? I'm telling you folks, God can redeem the time. Curses got to go. He can redeem the time. Come on, somebody. You don't realize who he is, do you? You don't realize the position he put you in. <clears throat> I dare you to walk around and act like you don't have a real papa. You got a daddy can fix anything. Glory be to God. Now I wish I had more time now. Go ahead, redeem the time. Oh, come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Folks, I'm telling you, we got to know ways and we got to go to God to fix things in our lives. Oh, my God, I tell you, it's a sin and a shame to keep listening to a whole lot of uh, human voices instead of listening and saying, God, what do you want me to do about this situation? God can turn anything around if we're willing to get in that and have the repentance 
and I've been dealing uh, with this. Because young Kippur got to come up. The whole congregation need to go to God and get clean. Because we want God to take charge. And when God take charge, he can do what he want to in the fellowship. And anything you need, he can fix it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Well, I guess that's all of me. Did y'all get anything? God bless you.